I've cooked so many briskets at home in my backyard, it's like second nature. I mean, friends and family come over and that's what they want. They wanna taste my barbecue brisket. But I have never cooked brisket for a competition. So I'm at the home of one of the winningest pit masters in competition history, Harry Sue from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, Ow. Harry! You got a lot of trophies here, Harry. What are we gonna be doing today, Al? Today? I need you to teach them and me how to make competition brisket worthy of winning trophies <laughs> like this. You think you can teach us that? I'll do better than that. I will share my secrets for competition brisket with you if you will do two things. Number one, cook me your backyard brisket. And also number two, pick one of my trophies and take it home as a souvenir back to North Carolina so you can show folks that you stop by Slap Your Daddy and pick anyone you like go back and show your family. He's got so many trophies, he wants me to take the extras to make room in his garage. Now, uh, Harry wants me to make my backyard brisket for him. Uh, I'm not nervous at all about that. <laughs> but yeah, you want it? I'll Let's make you backyard brisket if you'll teach me comp. Let's you ready? Do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so here we are, the Harry Sue backyard that we've all seen so many times in your videos. Thank you for inviting me back here, Harry. So we've got two Really impressive briskets here, right? So these are Snake River Farms black briskets, and we didn't go with the gold, because you said black is the one that does better in competition, right? Yes. Now, you've worked with Snake River Farms for a long time, right? About a dozen years, and uh, I won't lie, for competition, they are outstanding. Wow. This American Wagyu is uh, really, really tasty, and uh, the first thing you want to do is when you buy briskets is uh, remember that Harry taught you that you would pick a brisket based on size, symmetry, striation, and marbling. And Snake River Farms did not provide these, by the way. We, uh, we bought, yeah, we bought, bought these. Them. I bought Al these for this. Feel free to buy more of these as well. I'll put a link down in the description and that'll help support the channel so we can afford to buy more briskets to do videos like this. So yes. Al, you're gonna do more of a backyard style. I'm right. gonna do a full on comp. And right. then at the end, we're gonna do a taste test so that you can see why a competition brisket sometimes is inedible. I mean, like it's inedible or I'm just not gonna like it as it's much? It's not, uh, how should I say, something that I would eat on a daily basis. So let's save the fat so we can make our own Wagyu tallow, huh? Absolutely. All right, I'm interested to see what the differences are between how you trim a brisket and how I do. I would describe it kind of two ways, right? One is a backyard trim or a restaurant trim optimizes on a yield of right. the meat. Right. Uh, in competition, we are not really one concerned about the yield because we want to get perfect eight slices and some beautiful cubes or burn ends right. for the judge's box. Because the key is to get the perfect pieces for the box right. and not so much worry about the yield. Right. But in a backyard setting, you definitely want to optimize on yield. I take all the fat off the point because I need to have crust on both sides of the burn ends. Okay. Uh, of the point muscle, which is where I cut the burn ends from. I'm really not interested in yield, so I, I will be doing a pretty dramatic trim. Right. And uh, I'm going to be basically focusing on getting the best parts that will be going into a judging box. And that's very, right. very different than cooking barbecue right. for your friends and family. Now, Harry, I didn't have a teacher. I learned this from friends and people who knew how to cook. And of course, once YouTube became a thing, YouTube University. You've been barbecuing for like 40 years, right? I started my barbecue learn? journey in the early 80s. I was a uh, sort of a refugee from the oil crisis. I lost my job flying 747s and I had to retrain for a new career. I decided that I would study something called computers, which I had no idea what, what it was. And I went to Texas Tech. The first week of being in America as an international student, my classmate took me out for brisket and I ate one bite of that brisket and I say, oh my God, where have you been all my life? I've never tasted anything so amazingly delicious. And I spent actually many, many years, in fact, decades trying to replicate that flavor. Right. Because I had no pedigree, it, was not, it wasn't like my grandpa taught my pa, my pa taught me how to cook barbecue. I was a computer hacker. So what I decided to do is I told myself I can crack the code for cooking brisket. Right. I would cook a piece of meat with salt and pepper write down the results. Right. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, chili powder results. So I built all these real profiles into a software tool. I did it in the grandfather of Microsoft Excel. So I'm now it's quiz time. So can you guess? It was... Before Visa, Lotus 1, 2, 3. Visa, Visa something. Visa Calc. Visa Absolutely. Calc. <laughs> you are the only myself. person 
that guessed it right. Because I'm the oldest guy to be invited to your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so you notice I'm trimming up all the fat. So my, my brisket yes. looks very different than yours. It's also yeah, you're a much smaller. So for example, like Al, look at this part here. It's very thin, right? I can't use this part because the slices are not going to come from here. Right. I'm going to optimize right here. See that? So my beautiful slices will come from this angle here. And this part is a little bit too thin. I'm going to basically trim it off like so. And you notice I'm using a 30 degree angle so that it's aerodynamic when I trim it, so that when the right. airflow flows over the pit, it doesn't cause any ages of the brisket to burn. Okay, so my brisket is kind of ready, and uh, I'll kind of, while you're trimming yours, yes, I'll show Mine is not as pretty as yours. You have a very sharp Thank knife you. that looks beautiful. I That's do. a beautiful looking knife. This is one of the longer boning and fillet knives, part of the Shogun series from Dahlstrang. So I want to point something out to the audience here. You see as uh, he's trimming it, you see the fat's melting. Right. So oleic acid, which is the primary fat, that's why the unctuousness and the slipperiness and the smoothness and the creaminess of the brisket comes from this oleic acid. So as he's trimming it, it's kind of warming in my backyard. You can see the fat actually melting at room temperature. You see my hand here? It's full of oil. This is oil. So that's what makes a really a Wagyu brisket taste really good. Wagyu, Wagyu fat, which is the tallow or the oleic acid, will not coagulate like regular beef tallow. This is also somewhat healthier, yes. much healthier than the regular fat that you get from a beef tallow. All right, last one. Last all call. Right. Last call. Last all right, call. there we go. All right, so we got all the fat in. Yours is prettier than mine. Bonus we reel, we're going to cook some curry, Thai curry. Ooh, and, there uh, you go. All right. I'm going to make an announcement on your video that Harry's going to be starting a new channel called Hurry Curry Harry. Because I love cooking curry. Hurry so Curry Harry. Harry. Yes, huh? And uh, I'll, I'll uh, invite you back and We'll do a collab on curry. Awesome. Will you let me know when you set up the channel so I can be the first subscriber? Absolutely. Yes. We'll do that. Okay, cool. All right, so Harry, I'm going to make a rub for mine. When I'm in the backyard, I just do a traditional SPG, a salt, pepper, garlic. I use two parts of uh, kosher salt. I use Morton's kosher salt. And then I usually use 16 mesh black pepper, but you have told me that you like 12 mesh better because it's it more closely matches the Morton's granule size, right? Yeah, so uh, people go to bed dreaming about their vacation in Hawaii. I go to dr bed dreaming about the uh, size of the mesh on my pepper. And, and then you like, you like garlic? Yeah, so I usually use granulated garlic, but this is... Uh, California style. California style. So Got this parsley. is garlic with parsley, so we're going to add a little bit of other colors. So this will be one part of this. So very, very traditional SPG. We call it SPG in Texas. Right. Salt, pepper, garlic. And if you want to really amp it up, you can do SPGC. C stands for cayenne. For cayenne. C. Yep. I mean, a real oh, yeah, touch one, for you, one, I'd one, be one, using. Half, yeah, one teaspoon is probably good. I'd be using uh, a little bit of shiitake mushroom powder and. Yeah, of course, you could uh, buy this guy's product. He already has it in there. That would have been easier. I guess I should have used one of Harry's rubs. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys what I did with the competition trimmed brisket here. So you notice that I trim all the fat off the point. I trimmed this big piece off. That's probably $30 of the brisket. And I want to make sure that my. Muscle here is ready to be level and sliced into beautiful cube burn ends. I'm going to inject the brisket, which you do not have to do, but I am cooking a comp brisket. The injection has a few products in it. One of them is called sodium phosphate. Sodium phosphate is what you get when you order a chicken nugget. A little bit of seasoning in it, beef broth and so on, and probably has a little bit of monosodium glutamate. For those of you wondering what MSG is and whether it's bad for you, go watch my video. I did a very, very lengthy story on MSG and what it is and how to use it. So and this it's a one, really good episode. So the first thing that goes on is my my Texas kind of S&P, kind of my version right. of that rub. I'll apply it on both sides like so. On the back side, it's SPG. You notice how I'm shaking the rub a little bit higher and yes. I shake the bottle before I apply it on. Right. That way it applies it very nicely right. e and evenly. So right. I'll put my uh, beef rub now. It's got powder Worcestershire, shiitake mushrooms. It's got celery seed, a right. whole bunch of other stuff that's going to umami kind of up your umaminess. The key to great barbecue is having sufficient smoky hot air. Right. Bathing your meat to create the mallard reaction or the crust. Right. So stick burner, we're going to flow over, big green egg. Heat's going to come from under, but more smoke around. Yes and no. Uh, every pit's got a Goldilocks zone, depending right. on whether it's the left or right top shelf, bottom shelf, whether right. it's away from the firebox or towards the firebox, whether it's a reverse flow or it's a direct offset. Right. My recommendation for everyone is always try cooking your meats in different locations and different up and down so that you can find the Goldilocks spots within your own pit. For my pit, I like to cook it with the fat 
the down, upside down yes. on that one. Throughout the entire cook, yes. Uh -huh, right. yeah. And I find that in my double blind taste testing, it works better. Right, so we are ready now and uh, ordinarily in a competition, I would let my injection sit eight hours. The rub, it sits for four hours. So we at least need to let it sit while we fire up the grill, right? So Absolutely. let's go get the grills up to temperature. We'll get these on and then they're going to cook. I mean, we're probably not going to touch them for eight or nine hours. He's just right? kidding because when he says fire up the grill, he means press the button. We'll get these in and then we're going to be back in eight or nine hours when these are ready, or at least it'll be eight or nine hours for us. For you, it'll be like that. All right, the briskets have been cooking for about nine hours, Al. Yes, and nine hours. And your backyard brisket and the comp briskets are ready for the next phase. So this is the, the comp brisket and you can see none of this rub is coming off on my finger. This is ready to wrap. Now we're not, Harry and I talked earlier, neither of us care about the temperature at this point. It's, yeah. it's probably now, in um, the stall maybe through. Now when Al picks it up, something's gonna fall off. Blocks of wood gonna fall off. When you cook briskets, it tends to puddle and the blocks underneath will make a dome shape and that way the brisket doesn't puddle. That way you don't have to be up all night trying to tip your brisket to get the puddles off. Because yep. any part that has a puddle, there's not gonna be any bark. I'm gonna wrap this in paper. Paper, uh, like I mentioned, is my favorite way. So I've got these spread apart, and then from last night, we made this tallow overnight. So this is fresh made from the trimmings from both of our briskets. So I'm just gonna get a good, healthy dose of adding this healthy fat right back onto the brisket. And then my first fold is gonna come across this way, and then come across this way. I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna fold in. Right now the fat side is up, we'll come across one more time. We're right back the way that we had it. So this is going back in the smoker. Now I would normally crank up the temperature uh, now up to about 350 to accelerate the cook. I'm not worried about as much about getting the bark formed and smoke on there. So that'll accelerate the cook and hopefully be done in a couple of hours. But we're gonna put both briskets on the same smoker. So I don't know, Harry, if you accelerate as well. I, I cheat, I put mine in the oven. So you're more than welcome to crank it up to 400, 350 okay, in the Okay, great. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, let me get out of the way and let Harry wrap his. I would like you to hang on to a can of beef broth. Okay. Just, and I have two sheets underneath. And I made a little foil boat right here. Okay. Like so, so it doesn't drip. And what I want you to do is, I would like you to drizzle a little bit of the beef broth right here. Yeah, this part cannot be rushed. You can see how it's soaking in. So the key is to get this into the brisket without leaving any residue at the bottom. So you gotta take your time. And that's the secret tip I wanna pass on to the viewers that you too can create a championship brisket by just employing some good technique. Now for folks who are asking why we're doing this technique right now, is the brisket ready even though it looks ready to eat? It's not, right Al? Right. And it's very right. tough because right. the collagen is still very tightly wound. So you guys can see there's no jiggle in this. I push it, it bounces right back. This is a tough piece of meat still. It's probably, we, did, we didn't temp it because we're not, we don't really care about the temperature. Yeah. But this is probably about 165, 170 degrees. Yeah, so right the, the uh, part about cooking my style is that I tell my students to lock their thermal pen and lock their watch in the right. drawer before they start. I'll go ahead and poke it and tell me how yeah. it feels. Oh yeah, it's like poking right. through a belt. So, so right. what this L is, is poking is actually the triple helix of collagen. The triple helix of collagen is mother nature's scaffolding. You, you heard, that I'm not 100% sure of myself and the smoke and the paper will make a difference in continuing to cook. You got a thought on whether if I did the same thing, if I did two briskets, one in, finished in the oven, one in the smoker wrap that way, whether I'd be able to tell the difference? Okay, so let me break it down in the kind of component pieces. Number one, paper versus foil. Right. Uh, competitors, we use foil. Right. Because we use a mop. We, we rehydrate. Right. When you're cooking backyard, paper is not waterproof. Right. So, so if I you pour the 10 on ounces paper. on right. paper, it's likely that the liquid will leak out until the fat coats the paper and right. makes the paper watertight. So that's one myth and truth I want to mention. Okay. Competitors use foil, backyarders tend to use paper, restaurants use paper. Right. Next myth is uh, fat side up or fat side down. What is okay. your thought? Well, so on my stick burner, I always cook fat side up because my airflow comes over the top of the okay. fat. All right. right. On my green eggs and on the kettle, I cook fat side down to mm -hmm. protect 
okay. the meat from the heat that's underneath as opposed to the heat coming over the top. So I completely agree. Uh, right. The key to deciding whether it's fat up or fat down is the airflow. Air right. Airflow. The marking and crusting is key. It depends where your sweet spot is in your pit. Every pit's got sweet spots. So whether the sweet spot is at the bottom shelf, the top shelf, the left or the right, you have to kind of find out for yourself through many cooks. Right. At the same time, I always recommend you try it fat up, fat down in different spots in your pit to reach the optimum spot. Now, this is like absolutely gorgeous. You can see how even it is and how the bark set up. So he's done a really good job getting in one 10 ounces and there's barely any liquid yeah, at the bottom. just a little bit in the bottom. Yeah, so so really Al did yeah. a phenomenal job. I need to put Al on my team. He can cook on my contest. All right, how awesome would that be? All right, you know what? I would do a competition if I was on Team Slappy Daddy. There you go. We'll, we'll do, <laughs> definitely do that one day. So Al, you notice that we put the brisket in a little black belt tip yes. here, which is the boat. The boat, right. The boat is so that the liquid doesn't drip onto your navel when right. you pour the liquid on. So you notice also very strategically, I placed the brisket halfway down the foil, like this, two layers, right? right? Because I'm going to teach you how I do my Harry's three-sided Huggy Baby Wrap. Huggy Baby, that Huggy. sounds exciting. So okay. what we're going to do is we're going to fold it over. Right. So if I roll three boat. sides, I'm going to get a watertight boat. Right. And none of the liquid that we put in will leak out. Right. And the, no moisture is lost during the cooking process. So we're going to, actually, I'll, I'll start it and you can carefully roll it and try to finish the seam high so that it doesn't leak below the water line. So right. set, set the water line high. All right, so now this is called the three-sided wrap. When you get to the top 100 barbecue teams in America, we all cook pretty decent brisket. Yeah. But I tend to win because I understand this phenomenon. So the biggest secret to competition is the barbecue love. Come with the intention from the most powerful source, which is your heart. So if you have a calm, peaceful, joyful demeanor, that energy is going into the food. And when the judges eat it, it's going to be something really special. So okay. you're going to the oven and I'm going back to the smoker? Yes. All right, we will see you guys in a couple hours. Okay, guys, the brisket spent a couple more hours in the oven until they were probing ready. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you that. notice we've got these bamboo skewers. So. Uh, you guys have heard me say, and you've heard Harry say, yes. we don't cook to temperature. I have no idea what temperature these are. Make sure but it is uh, probing just like peanut butter that is Skippy brand from the fridge. Skippy specifically, cold, skippy, skippy, creamy. Cold, skippy, creamy. And uh, that's what you're going to get all mm. over when it's done, right? Yeah. Okay, so should we get these out and see what they yeah, look like? Let's, let's do it. So first thing I do is I rehydrate my brisket. This right. is very dry, so this is a black belt tip. And as I rehydrate it, you can see that it is absorbing the liquid. I do not use the drippings because the drippings are too salty. I just use plain water. Okay, I'm going to use my Devastator knife to cut it up now. Oh, yeah, whoa, whoa, you don't need to use the Devastator. No? No, no. I brought presents. Oh, okay. You know the video is brought to us by Dahlstrong, right? So Dahlstrong wanted us to have something new that neither of us have before, which by the way, is uh, quite a feat because with your knife collection and my collection, coming up with something that neither of us had was a feat. But wait till you see this. Check wow, it out. I, Open it I have to definitely thank the nice folks at Dalstrong. Yes. So what, what do we have here, Al? So this is a 10-inch Shogun Elite Butcher's Bullnose Knife. Mm -hmm. So just like your slicers, it's got divots down the side, which will okay. keep the brisket from sticking to it, yes. right? It's 10-inch, so it's smaller than most of the slicers, but plenty for what we're doing with the brisket. This is Japanese AUS-10 steel. So it's got a 62 Rockwell hardness. It's sharpened to between eight and 12 degrees on either side, so an average of 10 degrees. So this is like a scalpel, wow. right? Should we slice? Let's do it. And all right. uh, I will, first of all, check for jiggliness. Yeah. And I'm gonna run my knife into the area between the point and the flat to yep. separate the point. Exactly. So, slides right off. And I'm gonna do something that is unusual for competition. I'm gonna sauce my brisket. That's what we do. <gasps> Gas of oh. uh, incredibility. Because, I'm not uh, saucing mine. You really have to kind of have a little bit oom and right. extra. All right, Harry, we do something fun on the channel here because brisket done right is so juicy that slicing is like food porn, right? Absolutely. All Go right. for it. Cue the porn music. Let's do it, Al. Let's uh, let our crew 
do a little taste test back yeah. here with this competition and yeah. see if they like it. I mean, I don't think there's going to be a winner and a loser here. Nope. At least I hope not because if there is, I'm going to be the loser. <laughs> so hoping that they can just tell the difference and tell us the difference between them. All right. Tyler, come hither. Steven, come What's hither. Up, Make a point. Burn it. All right. Cheers. 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 There's a lot of flavor in there. Mm. All right. And it's, I didn't make it too salty. Like I yeah, told it's you. not so, too salty. So I kind of lied when I told you. You said it was going to be inedible. This yeah. is definitely edible. This is so good. I did not over salt it. I do believe there's a right and a wrong in this world, and barbecue sauce on brisket just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm getting the shakes a little yes. bit. But it does taste good, but I can't. Don't tell anybody <laughs> that it But it's, I don't know that it needs it, though. It's so tender, yeah. mm -hmm. Harry. So it's just. The judges just another layer of complexity to impress the judges. When the you have against 150 it. teams, you really have to kind of have a little bit oom and right. extra. All right, you guys want to taste a little yeah, Al let's backyard? Let's try Al's, Al's backyard. Give right. a shot. Cheers. All right, cheers. 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 Nothing wrong with that. That's really solid. So it doesn't have as much flavor as yours, but it's not supposed to, right? I mean, you're it's all about the competition. Very good Dalmatian, Texas style, SPG C brisket. Yep. Absolutely good. And I can taste that cayenne you had me at. I mean, that was a smart a move. At the end. When you do the next competition for brisket, I get to come crew with you and carry your bag and clean up after you or something? Absolutely. <laughs> Bring your entire crew and I'll just sit back and watch you guys work. Awesome. All right, so watch the video over there. Harry, you want to show them? The video Harry's showing you right there next. And we'll see you next time on Eat, Eat More Vegans. Vegans.